Welcome to this WiseL tutorial on creating script tasks using the C-sharp programming language within SQL Server Integration Services. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin by looking at the two types of script within SSIS, script tasks and script components, and then we'll introduce an overview of what we're trying to achieve. We'll then look at actually writing script, looking at basic script tasks, looking at using the variable dispenser to get at variables within our script, and look at a simpler method to access variables, which is to pass them into script tasks as read-only or read-write variables. Finally, we'll look at how to finish the package by joining all the script tasks up together and testing it to check it works. So let's get started. Before we begin looking at script tasks in the control flow, let's just have a look at the possible ways of writing script within integration services. There's basically two. As I said, in control flow, you can create a script task. And what this will do is firstly manage the, con the order of execution of tasks within your control flow. And it's also handy for reading in and setting the value of variables. And that's what we'll be covering in this tutorial. You can also separately create script components in your data flow. And a script component, as this dialog box suggests, allows you to say where your data is coming from, the source, where it's going to the destination, or by far the most commonly, it will do transformations on the data, so it will massage it as it flows through your data flow. And that will be covered in a separate tutorial. But for now, let's go on and look at what we're trying to achieve in this package. So what's our package going to do? Well, I've got an Excel workbook of those familiar X Factor contestants, UK version again. And I've got two worksheets. I've got a mentors worksheet which contains 10 mentors and I've got a finalist one which contains 109 finalists. Add those two numbers together and you get 119 uh, records in total. Remember that number if you could please. In SQL Server I've got the same thing. I've got a table of finalists, there's 108 rows in that. And I've got a table of mentors and there's 9 rows in that. If you add those two numbers together, you get 117, not 119. Remember that number too, if you could, please. What's all this got to do with integration services? Well, here's the package I want to create. It looks a great deal more complicated than it actually is. What it's going to do is ask an initial question saying, do I want to get my information from Excel or not? If I do, then what it will do is read in the two Excel worksheets, using, use a row number data flow task, to store those information in variables, add the two variables together and show the results. So I'll get a message saying there's 119 rows in total. If on the first question I say I don't want to get my information from Excel, I'll go down the failure route. And in that case, I'll decide to read the information in from SQL Server tables. I'll get 117 as a result, and that will be displayed in the final message. So let's see this actually working in practice. Before I continue, I must close down my Excel workbook, otherwise it won't work. So if I started off, first time round, I'm going to choose to get my information from Excel. So I'll choose yes. I go down the left-hand path, and I get a message saying there's 119 finalists and mentors. I'll now run that again, but this time I'll go down the right-hand path, and I'll choose no, I don't want Excel. In this case, I get the message saying there's 117 finalists and mentors. So I can choose OK. Don't be put off by the failure symbol there. That's intentional. That makes me go down the SQL Server path. So that's what my package is going to do. I'm not in any way claiming it's the most efficient way to achieve this, but it does illustrate how scripts in scripting works in script tasks in the control flow. So what we'll now do is go on to the next stage, which is to show how to write basic script tasks. So let's have a look at how to create our first script task in integration services, which will be to ask a question saying, do you want to use Excel or not? I've created a new package, and I'm going to ask, uh, in a, I'm going to create a script task, and I'll say use Excel as the name of it. To attach script to it, as always, I can double click on it. I'm actually going to use the language C sharp by default throughout this tutorial. There's a separate tutorial if you're a VB person. And I'm going to change the name of my default procedure to run to make choice, just to show it's possible. But I won't at this stage pass any variables in. 
So if I edit that script, what will happen is it will create a separate project in Visual Studio Tools for Applications. And what I can now do within that, firstly, is to get rid of the horrible comments, a personal view of that. And then I'm going to have to rename my entry level procedure to make choice because that's what I chose to call it. So I've now got a stub of a procedure which will run when that script task runs. Now I've got some code in my clipboard which I'm going to paste in at this point saying what it's going to do. So it's going to display a message box. The message box will have the prompt saying choose Excel. It will have a caption or a title saying choice. It will have a yes and a no button. It will have a question mark symbol. And by default, if I press return, it's the second button, button two, which will be selected. So I'll choose SQL Server. What I'm then going to do is look at the value of the answer, so to see whether I chose yes or no. And if I chose yes, what I'm going to do is return success from this procedure. And if I chose no, I'm going to return failure. To make it easier, Microsoft thoughtfully add in every single script task this enumeration. It's called script results, and it means that instead of having to type microsoft.sqlserver.dts.runtime.dts.execresult.success, I can just type script results.success as a shorthand. So that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do in the yes part of my clause is say that the task result equals script results.success. And if I leave it like that, it will give an error. And the reason for that is because I need to convert the type of it. If you look at task result, can you see that the data type of that is int? So what I need to do is perform a data type conversion to make sure that our apples and apples are being compared. So that will return success if I choose Excel. If on the other hand I choose SQL Server, I want to choose a failure or return failure. And that completes my script, I think. What I can now do is try it out. If I close this down, it will automatically save it. And when I choose OK, it will build it as well to make sure it makes sense. And the fact that it's not coming up with any errors at that point is a very good sign. So if I now want to run this package, I'll just make sure it's my default before I begin. I can choose either yes or no. If I choose yes, it, goes down this, it will go down the Excel path. If I choose no, it will go down the SQL Server path and I'll see a failure. So that's all looking very good so far. What I'll now do is go on to look at using variables in two different ways. I've got a, a second version of our tutorial. As you can see, I've added two sequence containers, one for two tasks to import data from Excel and one for two tasks to import data from SQL Server. To see how these work, I've set up two connection managers, one to my SQL Server database and one to my Excel workbook. What I've then done is within my sequence container for Excel, I've added two data flow tasks. The first one will read the mentors in from the Excel worksheet called mentors, and then it will use a row count task to assign that to the variable called number mentors. The other data flow task does a similar thing, but this time it stores a number of finalists in a variable called number finalists. And the SQL Server tasks do exactly the same thing, but in this case they take their table, their data from the table of mentors in SQL Server rather than the Excel worksheet, and the finalist takes its data from the table of finalists in SQL Server. So I've got three variables created. I've got number finalists, which will hold the number of rows in the finalist table or worksheet, number mentors, which will do the equivalent for the number for the mentors worksheet or table. And what I need to do is calculate the number total, which is the sum of the first two. As it happens, by far the easiest way to do this is with an expression task. But to make life more complicated, and to show how script tasks work, what I'm going to do is add one of those down here, and use it to calculate the result. So I'll calculate the total there. I'll connect all my tasks up later on in this tutorial. For the moment, let's just edit this. I could, and probably normally would at this point, pass in the two read-only variables I want to work with, number finalists and number mentors, and pass in the read-write variable called uh, total numbers, uh, which I want to set. 
But I'm actually going to make things a bit harder and use something called a variable dispenser just to show how this works. I have to say I'm not a big fan of this, but if somebody may find it useful. So in my main, main procedure, which I've left called main on this occasion, I've again got some code in my clipboard. What this does is create a collection of variables which is initially empty. It then uses something called the variable dispenser and locks for reading two variables, number mentors and number finalists, so nothing else can change them. It then locks for writing the number total variable. What it then does is call, makes a call to the get variables method and what that does is add the variables which I've locked into my variables collection. I need to use the word ref because I'm passing the argument by ref so that I can get some information out of the method as well as passing my information into it. What I then do is use the two variables I've added to my variables collection, get their values and read them into integer variables called number mentors and number finalists. And finally, I set the value of my number total variable. On this occasion, rather dangerously, I've done this by index number. It's the third item in the collection, which is why it's got number two as the index number. It might have been safer to use number total instead and you access it by name. What I then have to do is unlock my variables collection and finally say that the whole thing has been a success. So that's how you can use a variable dispenser. What we're now going to do is show an easier way of creating script using by passing in variable values instead, which I think is what I'd actually recommend. So the final bit of our jigsaw before we link all the pieces together is to write a script to display the total, the value in fact in the variable called number total. Now I could have done that in the previous script but I wanted to show it in a separate one to give me an opportunity to show passing variable values, which is actually something we've done in quite a few previous tutorials in this series. So I'll add a script task in there, and what it will do is display the total. So that's what I'll call it. And then we can double click on it to edit it. But what I'm going to do in order to be able to access the variable called number total in my script is I'm going to pass it as a read-only variable. So there's all my system variables being listed, and there in the middle is number total. It's a read-only variable because I only want to find out what the value is. I don't want in any way to change it. So now I can edit my script, and in the main task I've got some code in my clipboard. I'm just going to paste that in by right-clicking and pasting. And what it will do is create a variable called number total and set it equal to the value of the variable called number total. So it's much easier, I think, to pass in the variable and then access it as part of the collection of variables um, within uh, DTS, within SSIS. Now that I've got that variable, I can just display the value in a message. I need to convert it to a string first before I can do that. And then I'll spit out the fact that the whole thing has been a success. So that completes my script. What I can now do is to exit that just before I do that, here's what would happen if I had an error mess, error in my script. So I've missed out the semicolon, which I fairly often do in C Sharp. If I now don't notice that red underlining and try exiting this, and then choose OK, it will tell me that I've got compilation errors in my package. Do I want to save my changes? And at this point, the thing I'll be most likely to do is choose No, go back into my script, and correct the change. And I can use the error list window to find the error. So if I reinstate my error and go to my error list, I can double click on that and it will highlight where the error is. But I'm going to hopefully write a perfect script and all I now need to do is link all these paths together by setting some constraints. So we'll be covering constraints in a later tutorial in the series. But for now, let's have a quick look at what we need to do to get this package to work. The first thing to do is to say, connect up the first script task with this import from Excel bit. But I also need to connect it up to the SQL Server bit. That's not going to work. If I choose yes to use Excel, it will return a success from that script and everything will be fine. But it will execute both the two packages. 
So what I'm going to do is right click on this second constraint and change it into a failure one. And what will happen now is if I choose no from the first error message, I'll go down the failure route and I'll import my data from SQL Server. Now I need to address what happens after importing the data. And to do that, I'm again going to connect up the Excel sequence container up to the calculate total script. And I'm also going to connect the SQL one. As things stand, this script will never run because it can only run if both of these two sequence containers both complete successfully, and that can never happen. So what I'm going to do is right click on each or one of these and choose edit and change it so it's a logical law. So in this case, any one constraint leading into the task must evaluate to true, which is exactly what I want. If I then choose OK, both the two green lines show in dotted as dotted lines to show that any one of them can be true. And I can now just link up the final two tasks to finish my package. I'll just make sure that that's my um, startup object. And if I now run this to test it out, it will work whether I choose Excel or if I don't. And that completes this tutorial. You can find loads more training resources on SQL Server integration services, reporting services, analysis services, .NET and Microsoft Office at www.wiseout.co.uk.